All right, True Footy Podcast 30. I'm joined once again by my good friend or medium friend, Daniel Busher. How are we, Busher? Yeah, pretty good. How about you, cruising? Yeah, not too bad, not yeah. too bad. I think this is our first podcast of the AFL season so far. I think uh, 20 to watch in AFL 2019 podcast was prior to round one. Um, but now here we are. How good I, is it to have footy back? I'm enjoying it so far. It's good. Just something on a Friday night when you've got nothing better to do. You can just sit there, enjoy a game of footy, have a couple of beers or whatever at home. Or a Thursday night. What do you think or of Thursday, Thursday night footy? It's different, but yeah, it spreads it out a bit more so you can catch more games, which is good. But Yeah, there's yeah. some people that don't like it. I can understand that to an extent. It's a bit like random. Like it's a bit hard, interesting on the players. Like in terms of people attending the games as well, it's probably true, true. Adds difficulty. That's true. If you go, if you're someone who goes to a lot of football games, it probably does have a negative effect. And then I'm also thinking Thursday nights a lot. It's often a night where people have footy training, so yeah. if they play football, that's a bit of a pain in the ass. But for me, it's good because um, it's just something to watch after work. So yeah, exactly. Yeah, fair enough. Um, we have a new guest today yep. in lieu of Joycey and Lewis, who are still with us, but uh, just can't be here today. This is a football from the 2018 AFL Grand Final. So for those who watch the channel a fair bit, you might have seen that as um, there was a few AFL videos on the AFL official YouTube channel where they had a few different content creators supply videos. Um, you can look for yours truly as one of the thumbnails for the videos as well. But the AFL got in contact and said that we were um, the best submission. So they gave us this footy from last year's 2018 Grand Final as well. You've already had a kick of it? Yeah, I've been chucking it around the set a bit, taking a few speckies. You're a Dockers fan, so you've let yeah. the dog chew this to bits. But, <laughs> um, <laughs> nah, it's a, it's a pretty awesome gift. As an Eagles fan, this means uh, a little, little bit extra to me. So, AFL, if you're listening, thank you very much for this amazing gift. So, we're just going to pop it right there. So I think you ought to go to a training session and get it signed, Mark. A little bit of flex. Yeah, yeah, I should do that, actually. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Let Dom Sheets on it. Yeah, just Dom. Yeah, just Dom. <laughs> no, it just gets on just by Daniel Venables. <laughs> what is with you and Daniel Venables? You, you have a vendetta against him. It's just I think his grand final game was pretty future. Yeah. And I like joking about it. <laughs> As a Dockers fan, that's the one thing you can grasp from that day that you can yeah. make fun of us for. Clutching straws. Oh, you may have won the flag in one of the best grand finals ever, but 10 Venables didn't have many possessions. Yeah. <laughs> um, Anyway, so today, True Footy Podcast 30. Um, well, the thing is, we've got so many people contributing to our Discord channel these days. So um, I put out a notice saying, you know, we've got a podcast coming up, guys. You actually so. gave the people plenty of warning for once for this <laughs> one. <laughs> yeah, in the past, I haven't. Um, yeah, we're doing a podcast in 20 minutes, guys. Do you have any suggestions? <laughs> I've only done that once or twice. <laughs> that was the first time. I'll give you some slack there. Yeah, yeah. But um, anyway, so we got about 20 or, 25 or 30 questions from our Discord contributors, and they're all good questions. So I'm thinking for today's podcast, we can just probably sit and answer them because they're all relevant to what we want to talk about anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Smash for all. Yep. So um, first question from Bangers, good contributor on the Discord channel. Uh, which side has been your favourite to watch so far in 2019, Busher, excluding Fremantle? Well, they wouldn't have made the list anyway because every Freo game I've watched so far, other than the North Melbourne games, made me want to headbutt a wall. <laughs> But I'll digress. I'd say I've enjoyed watching Geelong games so far. They've looked like they've gotten back to their best. Their impact guys are being able to make an impact and provide that spectacle of Dangerfield having a great game, Kelly having a great game, those sort of guys. And even GWS have looked have been a pretty good one so far. Like their midfield hasn't missed a beat. Seeing the new guys step up is exciting for them as well because obviously they had the talent to cover their losses but seeing exactly where it came from and how it fruition has been exciting as well those are two, two good nominations I had both of them on my list um, but I added a couple extra because I thought you might say those ones yeah. Essendon when they've been hot this yeah. year have uh, been really quick and really potent um, obviously like when they're off they're yeah. really bad but guys like Anthony McDonald Tip and Woody is one of the most entertaining players in the yeah, league right now yeah seven goals he had was great um, so that was my first nomination and uh, I know we said excluding our own teams, but I actually think West Coast, when, they're, when they've been on song, specifically against GWS and Collingwood, yeah. um, with their ball movement, I think it's probably second to nine in the league. So yeah. um, that's just my little They're good at that kick to kick. And Petra Shelley's had a few highlights as well. Yeah. So 
Um, but yeah, I think those are the teams that have probably been the most exciting so far. Yeah. Um, Gold Coast probably Gold haven't Co- been great to watch, but to see the games win, have been exciting. Yeah, yeah. Like the close finishes, that sort of thing adds an element of excitement. Yeah. The fact they can keep games that close makes them exciting to watch rather than True. the fact that if they were getting blown out, people would be flicking the channel. But the fact they're keeping it close, even if it's a grittier sort of game, it's still True. compelling. Especially for a team that is starved of success. Yeah. So. Um, so we're going to move through the questions fairly quickly because there's so many and I have to go home and pack because I'm going to Bali tomorrow. Um, which coach, this is bangers again, which coach is currently under the most pressure? Oh, I've got a couple of, I've sort of got here. Uh, North, The North Melbourne Scott brother, I'm feeling, is it Brad or Chris? I always get them confused, <laughs> honestly. Yeah, Brad, yep, yeah, okay. I always get the Scott brothers confused, I'm not going to lie, but yeah. Brad. They are twins. Yeah, North Melbourne sort of at the point where Maybe they probably rate their list internally higher than their performing sort of thing, so maybe there's a bit of pressure on him at this point. And then Brendan Bolton as well, because mm. how many cause Carlton's got to show something eventually. That, that, that's a really interesting topic in itself because Brendan Bolton, I feel like Carlton are in the right. Going yeah, the right I feel like he's a good. Like I feel yeah. like he's the right guy to be there, but it's just that their the, team's so young. Yeah. It's just that, what is it? Three wins in like 38 games. That is pretty damning. Like yeah. most coaches wouldn't survive that. But I, they have improved, so it's a really tough one. Yeah, it's, it's a really tough one. I don't know. I don't think he's under immediate pressure, but you have to, like you say, include. He him starts to need to have a bit of tangible at runs on yeah. the board rather than everyone like just thinking he's good and like. They're almost yeah. locked into the spoon already, I reckon, because they're three games behind, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, they're three like, games behind Gold Coast and St Kilda, both yeah. of them, and then the other bottom four teams are like North, yeah. Melbourne, Adelaide, Sydney. Like, yeah, I mean, it's too yeah. early to say for sure, but it doesn't yeah. seem like they're going to win the spoon. Hmm. But. I'll say, would you, I'll say that kind of transitions into another sort of question we had, but I've got in my notes, so if it kind of kills your order, my bad. <laughs> That's but cool. That's I'll cool. say with the outer finals, that sort of ties in. So I sort of only really had Carlton and North Melbourne are my definitive outer finals teams at the moment. I oh, so you, do you mean the teams you want to rule out of finals? Yeah, rule out, yeah. yeah that, that, that was, was a, a question, I believe, wasn't it? That was a question yeah. from Petricelli Magic um, from the Discord. Yes, so... Oh, is it? Hang on. Yeah, no. Yeah. Oh, I'm getting confused. No, it wasn't. It wasn't. Petricelli Ma- Magic asked a similar question. Was it HK? Because I was, well, I was like, who would you rule? Yeah, it might have been HK. It is HK. Yeah. It is HK. Yes. No, you're right. It was actually the next question. Yep. Yeah. Carlton, I agree. Um, it's hard to see the Suns, North or Swans making it, but I don't think you can rule them out. Yeah. Do you agree with that? Out of finals, yeah. yeah like, that's yeah. my thing, because a lot of the teams that I would have pegged making finals, like your Melbournes, your Richmonds and stuff, are floating around in the bottom half of the ladder at the moment, so they're going to be climbing up. Mm. But the fact there's so many teams that have overperformed so far, yeah. like St Kilda and Gold Coast have certainly both overperformed compared to expect- expectations. A lot of the average teams have played each other, which might yeah. be a bit misleading. Like, the Suns are 3-1, and one, but they've yeah. been three fairly average teams. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, that is a good question. I'd say I'd agree with you. Probably just Carlton, and yeah. then there's a few others. I just can't see yeah. like here, even Car- even Gold Coast. But um, just back to the coach question, really quickly. Yep. I, uh, the other nomination I had was Don Pike for coaches yeah. under pressure. I think uh, at one and three, his the team's talent. just his team's just imploded since they made the grand final and got belted. Yeah. Um, they're not playing good football. Uh, sorry, my phone just vibrated. Happens to the best of us, mate. <laughs> um, they're not playing good football. If they finish bottom four this year, their list is yeah. too good, in my opinion, to justify. If they're bottom four, he's gone. Yeah, they've got to be. Like, their yeah. team's too good, Yeah, in my opinion. And If like, they just miss the eight, I could see them giving him another sure. crack, maybe. But yeah, bottom four. Yep. Pack his bags. That's it. That's it. Cool. All right. Next question from Petricelli Magic. This one actually is his question. What, who do you think will be the one team that missed the eight last season that will make the eight this season? Well, yeah, I've probably gone the trendy cop-out answer for this one and said the Brisbane Lions. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think they're the obvious one. I think yeah. they could finish top six yeah. because of their fixture. Oh, obviously, they're yeah. playing good football as well. And they've got some talented players. They they're, they're starting to get their talent and it's starting to come yeah. together. I agree. I agree. Um, so, But if you look past the more obvious one in Brisbane, whoops, Port, mm. I reckon a sneaky chance mm. because... like That was so lose, close last year. Yeah, and... They've, they've played some good football and some average football. I don't think they played badly against Richmond. Um, yeah. I don't know if you caught that game. Just Richmond was just... Richmond had one well. of those inspiring backs against the wall where yeah. every now and again a team in that situation just figures it out and everyone loves it. They had one of those. Yep. I've tipped Port to beat the Eagles this week. Hmm. Yeah, that's Is my, that in Adelaide? No, nah, it's in Optus. Ooh. I'm tipping the Ruffy there. Uh, you've got to tip, yeah. tip one Ruffy again. 
Uh, right, right, yeah. Yeah. I definitely do because I'm not as successful in the tipping competition at the moment, so I've got to pick a few of those ones that less people pick to yeah. climb my way back up. Yeah. I'm doing a lot better in fantasy than the tips, that's for sure. Yeah, yeah, you've got, you're going well in fantasy. I'm doing average in fantasy. Um, my other nominations for teams that missed the ad, I think Essendon is still realistically a finals chance. Yeah. Um, just because they're in good form already. They're just such a Jekyll and Hyde side. It's yeah. just so hard to predict. And St Kilda as well. Um, if they put more runs on the bird earlier in the year, like they sort of have, like, because they had yep. the real slow starts, so if they can put a few extra win- wins on early, even if they're still inconsistent when they find that form and kill it, they'll still have those extra runs on the board to yeah. solidify their finals position. Got to bank those wins. Um, and St Kilda, if they beat Melbourne this week, which is a chance. Would you agree? They're think, a, yeah, they're smoky. Yeah. They're playing all right football. Ne- nearly beat Fremantle, yeah. which is not—it's not an easy trip. To and I've Perth. never minded the talent on their list either. They've like got I some agree. individuals who are really good. Jack Billings is winning my Phantom Brownlow at the moment, yeah. which is a big surprise. But he's playing good football. Yeah, even guys like Acres, Seb Ross had a killer game last week. Yeah, Membry, yeah, yeah. Josh Bruce has had a bit of a resurgence compared to last season. Yep. I'm a, I've always been a fan of Acres. I know he hasn't necessarily contributed a whole heap, but I think he'll. Yeah. I think he'll come good. Yeah. I've always said that, but I think he will. I did try to broker a trade for him in one of my draft leagues. Yeah, he's a solid fantasy player. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not related to him, by the way. I just, I just think he's. You're just a fan of. You just like the cut of his jib. I like to. I like to make big calls about unheralded teams or players sometimes. And for me, like to be fair, I remember back when I first met you. It was like first second year of uni. There was the year Acres was in the draft, and you were raving about him back then, even. <laughs> Yeah, maybe I was a little bit misguided. I was like, he should definitely be taken over Dom Sheed, but historically, <laughs> that that prediction has, well, that tip hasn't aged well because Dom Sheed has obviously just yeah. handed us a grand final. So, um, which team? Again, Petrocelli Magic asks, which team do you think is going to drop off and miss the eight this year? So, I guess that means you got to look at who's currently at the top of the ladder. There's a few teams we didn't expect. Oh, do you mean? Does he mean drop off from last season to miss the eight? That's how I interpreted it. That's it's, quite possibly what he meant. That's what I sort of probably, interpreted it as. Yeah, probably would have been. A, yeah. Which is probably harder to answer than your version because your <laughs> version is just like Gold Coast. Gold Coast and Kula. Dockers. <laughs> pains oh, me true, to say it, but true. Dockers. Well, I'll say Hawthorne then because I, I think I, like, I, I rate their talent. Um, yeah, Omira just rate in particular. Better. Is that I just don't is? really know if they have the depth. Uh, you know what I mean? Like, on the weekend, they're missing four of their first-choice midfielders. Yeah. And they go into the Geelong game, I think, down two defenders. They don't quite have the depth in their in their best 30, I think, yeah. to sustain it throughout the whole year. I think they're going to miss the finals. Yeah. I've got similar logic with my pick for my team to drop off. I had Sydney, because I feel yep. like they've lost a bit of depth. They're, they're trying to accelerate some youth and yeah. hope that gets it done. But they probably need a year... I agree a down you. year before they bounce back up. I reckon they're 2009 again, probably sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. That like, was the they last set, time they missed the Yeah, exactly. So yeah. yeah, yeah. So they're similar to that. They probably set up well to bounce back after that year out of the finals. They won the flag three years after that. So exactly, and they set up well with guys like Haney Mills, obviously. Yeah, Blakey, yeah. Florent, yeah, Haywood, exactly. Yeah. Got to so, love academies. <laughs> well, actually, only Haney and Mills are academy, but yeah, yeah Blakey true. was, wasn't he? True. Yeah. Yes, he was. So, so they yeah. bid it on him and yeah. got him cheaper than they should have. Yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah they've definitely uh, had some luck there. Yeah. Um, HK Pig asks, after the first few rounds, who are the contenders for the major awards? Um, I'll, I'll, I'll start us off yeah. with Coleman, and then do you want to do the Rising Star or something? Yeah. Um, Coleman. <laughs> Cameron and Lynch are currently far ahead. Yeah, they were the two at the online. moment. Um, so it's just easy to say, oh, those guys. <laughs> but, I said those guys. But the next guys after that are like Sexton, Dugowie, and McDonald, Tipping Woody, and generally non key forwards yeah. don't win the Coleman. And they're streaky. They're guys that can bob up for big games, but yeah. they can also have games where they go goalless or kick like a one goal or a few behinds or something. Yeah. yeah. Alex Sexton has been, he's really starting to make a name for himself this year. Yeah. Huh. Um, He's been one of the better goal kickers, small forwards in the league. But um, yeah, I can't see him. Would really. you say he's a small forward, Saxon? I'd say he's medium or. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. No, that's true. I, yeah. I was thinking anyone who's not a key is a small, but you're yeah. right. No, no, you're right. Yeah. He's medium. But he's, he's like a pressure forward, I think, yeah. as well. So, um, yeah. The, the line between small and medium kind of gets blurred. It's, uh, it was just me carelessly phrasing it. Mm. Uh, but yeah, Ben it's... Brown and JK are the ones that are slightly behind that I think are still a chance. Mm. JK's be... health's always the yeah, question. That is true, but he can still. Kick goals when he's not yeah. playing well. If they tell, if they told me at the start of the year you're getting twenty games out of JK, you'd 
jump yeah. on him every year. Yeah, and he's only missed one game out yeah. of four, so yeah. Yeah. Um, oh yeah, sorry, rising star. Oh, I've made a list here. Yep. It's Sam Walsh. Sam Walsh. <laughs> Too loud. And <laughs> Sam Walsh. <laughs> yes. Okay. Yeah, I'm enough. feeling pretty confident with that one. Yeah. Jack Ross had a very good debut. Yeah. But once guys like Koch and Martin are back in the side, yeah, it's difficult to see him sustaining that. Yeah. Constable's probably the, the other yeah, one. Yeah. He'd be number two, certainly. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. Brownlow. Yes. Um... Well, as I said in my fans in Brownlow, I've got Billings currently leading. Yeah. I don't think he's going to win it. But I think he's just been... It's a case yeah. of the Saints are winning games. Yeah. And he's been the top yeah. two player Saints on the ground. A key contributor. Um, I don't think they'll continue to win games at the same rate throughout the year. Yeah. So, Who do you um, think will win it? Well, you've got Lockie Neal. Yeah, he's there. top of my list at the moment. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't know if I'd say top. I reckon Trelaw is another good chance. Trelaw, yeah, he's, I like that. He's so good. Um, Dave, I've got, Danger is another chance I've got an interesting, another one from Geelong actually Tim Kelly Ooh, yeah, yeah. Because seeing Danger's playing a bit more forward and stuff And yep. everyone knows the refs love to vote for midfielders yeah. With Kelly dominating fully in the midfield yep. That could help him pip some votes off Danger Yeah, He's just more of a smoky bet but No it's a good bet yeah. I reckon Neil's a good one to tip because I think he yeah. is the main man at Brisbane. He'll Tom Mitchell it. Yeah, just because he'll just consistently be the best performed player in a yeah. team that's probably going to win games. So, yeah. Still, you'd that's hope Zorko would bob up for a few, but I think he's he sort I think of he's better than Zorko. Yeah, he is, but still, you'd expect Zorko to have one or two games yeah. where he just bobs up. True, true. And even another one that's been playing real, like even a little under the radar, but but's been steadily going well from McCluggage. He's like mm. starting to get lauded as a true. guy, and he's starting to. Emerge as a guy who was a number two pick with all that potential. He's starting the to... number three. Oh, was he number three? Was he? Sorry, <laughs> Toronto was. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You are right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, yeah. yeah. Good call. Good call. Yeah. yeah. Um, that kind of leads into Banger's question. Uh, yep. He's got another one. Who is your surprise nominations for AA? I've kind of paraphrased some of these questions, by the yeah. way, just to shorten them. But yeah, um, so like players that might be um, AA at the end of the year yeah. that you know would be a surprise. Yeah. Like, make the team or get nominated for the team? Uh, you specify. Okay. Because I've got three names here I'll sort of elaborate. Dylan Grimes is one I've got, actually. I can see him stepping up without Rance there the full year, playing more games like he did last weekend. Yep. Having an impact on a team that's still probably going to make a bit, of, at least an impact this year. And he plays for Richmond would help. Exactly. Which helps. <laughs> Definitely helps. The media will notice him. Exactly. He's in Victoria. It does help. Yep. Tim Taranto is another one I've got who's probably Ooh. a surprising one, but he's Banger. having a killer season. Bangers will like that answer. He's a Giants fan. He will definitely love that then. Yeah. But yeah, Taranto is another guy that's a surprise one considering guys like Coniglio are more louded, but yep, he's a guy that's probably been their number two mid this year with Kelly out early. Do you class Whitfield as a mid? I know he's a defender, but he's also he's I, playing everywhere, yeah. hasn't he? I had him as a back in the team of the week, actually, <laughs> yeah. so I, I'm going to stick with him as a back, especially because yeah. it's working so well in Dream Team. Yeah, uh, yeah, I've, yeah. I've captained him this week. Actually. And my third one, it's a bit of a caveat because he got injured on last Friday, and it's a real weird one. They don't know how bad it is, but his early form in the season, I'd say Chris Main potentially. He's, he's averaging close to 30 touches until he went down. As a, as a wingman, he's been playing like that wing sort of flank role. So if they were placing him based on actual position, they could definitely stick him on a wing or a flank. That's a good nomination. Yeah. I like that as a dark horse. Um, I've got a few as well that I'll quickly run through. Billings, yeah. yep, that's a bit of a surprise because he's you know struggled with late. Yeah. Jago Amir, I've talked up a fair bit on my show, uh, the weekly show, averaging 28.3 disposals. I think he's really stood up without Tom Mitchell there. Yeah. Uh, if he continues that all season at this rate, he's a good chance to make it. Travis Boak. Yeah, Boak, he's yeah. killing it this year, definitely. Averaging 34 disposals, ranks top 10 in contested possessions. And second in score involvements in the I'd league. I'd say he's back to his best, but this probably is his best yeah, I've I, ever I, seen Boak play. I agree. I agree. He's the main man at the moment so far yeah. for Port, probably. Him and Rockliffe, even, even though Rockliffe had that down game the week before. Yes, yeah. With his concussion. Yeah. <laughs> is that the one? Yeah. yeah. Um, the other one is a dark horse. Uh, I don't actually think he'll make it, but I think he deserves some credit. It's Braden Fiorini from Gold Coast. That was similar with my main one. It's like, yeah. realistically, probably won't, but him deserves and, the love. Him and Toot Miller, um, just 22 and 23 years old, I think they are. Um, yeah. And because they play for Gold Coast, largely unheralded. But for a team that's completely been, had the heart and soul ripped out of them, all their players leaving, um, they're shaping up to be pretty good frontline mids. And yeah. uh, 
he's a, he's a ball magnet. 28 disposals and four clearances a game. So, yeah. yeah. Um, next one. What is the most... Oh, this is Petrocelli Magic. Who is the most likely star player to request a trade from their team this year? Um, he's talking top 20. I don't know if there'll necessarily be a top 20 player. Oh, maybe. I, maybe. I, saw, I tried to base mine on that. And Bangers is probably going to hate, because I have two names here, and Bangers is probably going to hate both of them. Yeah, I've got, I think I've got the same two names. I've got Josh Kelly, yeah. who's one that's constantly being talked about as a guy being moved, and the other one's Canelio, who's yeah. another guy where there's consistent whispers of him going. I think Tom Morris... I don't think they'll lose both, but they could definitely lose one of them. I think Tom Morris is... Um, he's had a lot of talk that Kelly's about to re-sign with the Giants. Uh, so until that actually happens, you can't bet on it, but it does yeah. sound... I've, like It sounds like a 180. He used to sound like he was going to definitely leave. Um, and now it sounds like he's close to staying. Canelio is the one I think will definitely end up at Hawthorne. It just, yeah. It's just... A Hawks, you still... Yeah. I still think... I don't think he's going to come to WA. Is that what, you, what do you think? WA is still on the card. I, don't, I wouldn't dismiss WA yet. And Hawthorne, it's... I don't know where they get all the money from unless... Um, they are fairly top-heavy, I reckon. Yeah, but still, they, they'd be paying Tom Mitchell a fair bit. They'd be paying Jager a bit. They've uh, brought in some other guys. Roughhead, could he yeah. retire? Roughhead probably give you some okay. cash, but he's probably taking pay cuts. They're probably all taking pay cuts, some of those older players now. Just yeah. to, well, they probably will continue to. Yeah. Yeah. Wingard's another one they've just paid. True. Yeah. Scully, they Scully's probably got probably cheap. Scully's probably not on a whole lot yeah, I was going to say, yeah. they probably got him cheap, but he's probably still on a little bit. Yeah. Um, just quickly before the camera runs out of time and I have to reset it, yeah. um, Tim Kelly's got to still be open yeah that's like that's still an ongoing thing um, i i would have put him on my list but my issue is more whether or not he was specifically top a top 20 sure player. sure he will he could definitely be but whether he's currently yeah he's borderline so well i yeah. don't think that many top 20 players are going to leave I yeah. think the, the other two you mentioned um yeah. just to expand a little bit <laughs> sorry bangers but jacob hopper i think is out of contract this year yeah. hasn't been signed up yet really starting to make his name for himself he's, he's actually become a very good midfielder just yeah. quietly behind like even Taranto, um, yeah. like they're both really good. And Zach Jones is another one out of contract this year. Again, not top twenty, yeah. but uh, might be one of the more higher profile trades free agents. Yeah, yeah. And I think the Saints are linked to it because Melbourne as well because of his brother. I yeah. think I've, I heard whispers in Melbourne, but yep, they might not have the resources to pull it off. Yeah, that's it. Next question is from Dave, another good contributor. Um, last podcast, Jesse said that the Bombers are the hardest team to get a read on. Do you still yeah. feel like this is the case? Well, I'll answer it because it's more aimed at me, but you obviously you can speak as well. Um, <laughs> I'll, I'll allow it. Um, so I'd say, yes, this is probably still mm. the hardest team to get a read on because they've had two terrible performances and two amazing ones or good ones. And it's hard to, um, it's hard to predict whether it's going to go up or down. I think they're going to be good for a while and then probably have a mid-season slump and then come back yeah. again. Um, I can't see them being consistent enough for top four. Top six is also a stretch, but top eight is quite achievable. What do yeah. you think? I had them as top of the hardest to read list, but I've also got a couple of other teams I, I personally am finding a bit hard to read at the moment. Mm -hmm. One of them is my own team, the Dockers, actually, because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. they have times where, like the North Melbourne game, they looked outstanding. And even in the Eagles game, their pressure and stuff was outstanding. It's just their skills. Mm -hmm. If they can clean up the skills, they can do a lot more than they're currently doing. A lot of the times I noticed they just bummed it forward and there was an empty yeah. forward line because the ball was just so yeah. locked. That was in the derby anyway. Yeah, that, and even Gold Coast I felt was a bit hard to read based on their early performance, especially considering pre-season everyone probably had them pegged as the shittest team in history. Mm. And they're currently in the eight and have a winning record. With a young team, they might get tired yeah. towards the end of the season. So mm. hard to predict whether they'll yeah. sustain it, yeah. Um, Dave also has the next question which current one and three team do you think will finish bottom four so to make that clear the one and three teams are North Adelaide Sydney and the Demons which of those do you think could finish bottom North four North Melbourne which has been a bit of a recurring theme for me roasting North Melbourne so far but <laughs> well, out of those teams that makes sense out mm. of those four like I'm going to say the Demons yeah. won't because yeah, they're just too good exactly it, like crazier things have happened but um, eventually they've got to find their mojo, right? Like yeah, exactly. there's, there's too much class in that team. Yeah. Especially if they're underdone, because mm. surely that can improve over the season. Yeah, Not they're... a hell heap, but enough to avoid the bottom four. North, yes, because they, yeah. they were there two years ago. Yeah. And I, I do think they are stronger than then, but... They'll probably be at the top end of the bottom four, but... Yeah, 
yeah. yeah. But it's got to be someone because if the Gold yeah, Coast exactly. and Saints avoid it, then... <laughs> exactly. Um, and and the Swans, and I think, are a sneaky chance too. Yeah. Yeah, just... I know there's a guy called Max on the Discord who's probably going to hate me for that. He thinks I rag on Sydney a lot <laughs> just because I've tipped them to just dip. Yeah. Uh, but that's just my opinion. I respect them. They'll be back soon, but yeah. I just don't get a real confident vibe from this. Yeah. I still see them being a bit more talented than North and a bit yeah. more well-versed and consistent. Yep, I can So I'd can give them the edge that. over the Swans in terms of yeah. sliding. Yeah, fair enough. Fair enough. Dave then asks... What are your thoughts on the scoring being lower in the first four rounds than previous seasons? Obviously, we've had the rule changes to yeah. alleviate congestion, but the scoring is going down. What are your thoughts, Pusher? Well, I think I remembered reading something suggesting that round one just had particularly low scoring, which has affected the averages for everything, and then in the last three rounds, it's picked back up. Okay, fair like, enough. I haven't actually I, looked into it. I much. don't, but on the whole, I don't think the rule changes are going to affect scoring that much other than center bounces. But... I do love that rule because close games actually make them competitive rather than the team that's up sending 18 guys into their back 50. I think you know, uh, hit the nail on the head there. I think you yeah, said everything I was going to say. Um, I was a little bit sceptical that it was going to have any effect and it probably hasn't, like you say. like the, Or at least the 666 hasn't really changed congestion as much because like you say, once the ball's in flow, guys just run to it. They, they yeah, go. they do. And I think the clubs are starting to work out what's the smartest ways to do that. Um, but equally, I like... The six 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 rule, and now I think about it, I think it should have always been a rule. Yeah. I like it. Yeah, like you say, you can't plug, you know, three extra d- defenders in the back line when it's a close game. Um, much more chances for a fast breaking goal. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, so to really answer the question, um, I think it's just coincidence the the score being lower. Yeah. Um, I've enjoyed the footy so far, and I think it's also a product of. Um, well, actually, Brad Scott's on the rules committee and he reckons the scoring is lower because teams are being more conservative because of how uh, even the competition is uh, so and because they're unsure of exactly how the rules are there's a lot more um, defensive tactics and apparently there's like a decade record for uncontested marks because uh, so much of the time teams are just passing around the back uncontested uh, uh, racking up uncontested marks because of you know, being conservative. Even that sort of like teams going into the trend of who's doing well, because like a few years ago when it was the pre- manic pressure, every team was trying to do that. Now the Eagles have won the flag, kicking it and mm. controlling the ball. That's probably a factor where Very the uncontested marks, teams are probably trying to replicate that style of play to an yeah. extent. Yeah, fair call. Could be a mitigating factor in that. Yeah, no, that's true. Um, for me, like, I don't really care about how high scoring a game is. I actually, my favourite part of f- football is the contested side of it. So I don't necessarily care about shootouts. So, um, in that respect, the scoring doesn't, the low scoring yeah. doesn't bother me, and uh, I think it'll pick up. And, well, I care more about le- margins. If it's a close game, I'm happy to watch it. True, but. and there's been less beltings. Like yeah. Gold Coast have obviously been involved in four yeah. really tight games, and you might have thought they'd cop a few hundred point beltings by now. Yeah. Uh, and Carlton as well have had four games where they've lost by like under yeah. five goals. I think. Yeah, they've looked. That's yeah. the thing. They've looked sort of better, but it's not ten. Like. Back to the Brendan Bolton thing quickly. Like mm. they do look better every year. It's just not tangibly yep. coming to pass in terms of results. Yeah, yeah, yep. Moving on, Aegon Targaryen. Hmm? I highly doubt that's your real name. No, I'm just kidding. Um, His real name's John. <laughs> it could be. Do you think that Geelong will be a top fourteen this year? I have yes in capital letters written here. I'm f- capitals. Yeah. Holy capital shit. Yeah, no, right. I'm just kidding. Why? <laughs> because they've looked outstanding so far this year. It looks like they've finally figured out how to optimise their talent because last year that was probably the issue. You could yeah. even say that a little bit about Collingwood this year that they're having that struggle to optimise their talent. Not bringing in beams sort of like how John brought in Dangerfield and it's taken them a bit to figure it out. But now they've figured it out and look outstanding. That's a good point. That's a good yeah. point. What do you make of their loss against the Giants? It's a loss at home, which obviously is very rare for Geelong, but they quite, it was right in the thick of it. GWS just are an outstanding team and had guys will them to victory. It doesn't reflect yeah. badly on Geelong, I don't think. Yeah, I tend to agree. I, I'd have them in the current top four, like my predicted top four, but it, it is early days because you know, they might not be able to sustain it. They've got a lot of young players, and they've kind of revamped their forward line this year. Dalhouse wasn't there last year. Yeah. Radagalia missed a lot through injury. Myers, I don't. Th- I think he debuted this year, even though he's yeah, a second he debuted year draft this year. Yeah, and Gary Rowan, I know he's not necessarily a gun, but he's just a yeah. different dynamic in there. And I think their forward line's looking a lot more effective. The thing is, with those a lot of those names you listed, those would be good 
defensive forwards, like for tackling pressure, like Gary Rowan's mm. quick as shit. He could chase guys down. Grime Eyes is a small pressure forward. Yeah, Dow House, House is a pressure forward. Yeah. Um, as you said which before, I was gonna say, which I think is important these days because it's something I've. I'd say criticising my own team like even though they say like guys like Cam McCarthy are agile enough to do stuff that small guys do they're not yeah. quick enough to apply the pressure that these small guys do yeah, and enough. that's something that's probably looked bad in Freo's game so far yep. structurally yeah I think I think Geelong kind of missed a little bit of defensive pressure last yeah. year in the forward line as well so so now they've added those smaller quick guys and it's helped them yep and then you like like you said before Danger's showing flashes of his best Tim Kelly hasn't really slowed down in fact yeah he's yeah. as he's good as he improved. was last year he's Picked up a little, even I think his possessions are up from twenty four to like twenty eight or something like yeah, that. Yeah, okay. And uh, his midfield, his centre bounces are up a bit as well, aren't they? What uh, his I, centre clearances? Is that centre mean? like he's always in the centre bounces? Oh, like, okay. Because okay. these percentages there last year, I saw some statistics. Probably about his it. tank is a bit better second yeah. year in the system. Constable's come in and is like a thirty possession midfielder already. Yeah. So uh, Tom Stewart as well. Why didn't he do that last year when I raved about him in all our draft <laughs> podcasts and loved him? <laughs> Why couldn't he do this last year? Because he was eighteen last year. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah, and Tom Stewart's probably having a bit um, of an underrated season. Probably yeah. on track for all Australian champ, defender. Yeah. So. Um, and, and and someone like Parfit as well is yeah. contributing as well. I, I just think their second layer has gotten better yeah. as well. Um, and their bottom six has improved as well because that was probably a big argument with them last year as well, their bottom six. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly right. Yeah. Exactly right. Um, interestingly, I, I came, when I was researching this question, interesting stats. Cats are the third last ranked side for inside 50s this year. Shit. And the second last is West Coast. I mean, part of that yeah. is because we played good teams yeah. uh, as of Geelong. Yeah. But still, that's still a pretty remarkable stat for a team that are uh, in the top three. So, what's your scoring percentage when you go in fifty? Because I know that's yeah, that's you can't ask me that question I, without yeah. notice. I sort of like I wasn't asking you for it specifically, but I'm saying yeah, like yeah. even though you're like might be well, low in that area, your conversion well, rate it would have to is, be high, right? Yeah, yeah, it would have to be high. Um, yeah. And that yeah, like it speaks to Geelong's improved forward line. Um, Geelong West Coast in two weeks is massive. Yeah. Um, Here or there? It's in Geelong. Yeah. Ooh. If Geelong drop that, that's a huge blow for their top four chances. Yeah. Uh, just in terms of like making a statement to the competition, if they beat West Coast, even though it's at home, then yeah. that that shows that they're you know yeah. up and about. And but if they lose, that's an opportunity blown. Do you yeah. know what I mean, I think they go into a favourite. West Coast haven't won well won once there since in the last twenty years. So you know it's it's it'd be a big statement if the Eagles won that, but. Anyway, Freo won a final down there. Yes, that was that was, <laughs> that was a great game. One of my proudest moments. Yeah, they're few and far between as a Dockers fan. Yeah, that was probably one of the best wins in club history. Bloody oath. Was that, the, that was especially because it was final. wasn't it supposed to be in Melbourne as well? But then the fixturing yeah. screwed us and stuck it in Geelong. Yeah, but just on that, why why is that unfair? What the fact that it was, I don't agree it was unfair like necessarily, but the fact that they had scheduled the game for the MCG sort of yeah you can't change at that last minute. But if they said from the beginning the game was going to be in Geelong, it's fair enough they had home field. Yeah, they yeah I guess I home. understand that. I think the, it was iffy because Fremantle had beaten the Cats at the MCG either that year or the year before. I can't remember if it was yeah. that year or the year before. Fremantle had actually beat them in the G, yeah. and they were like, "Yes, we got the Cats in the G again," and then it got moved. Yeah. So I think that's why Fremantle fans were sulky. Could be wrong on that. Probably mm. get corrected in the comments, but that's my memory of it. Um, Aegon Teogarian also asks, which teams do you see improving later in this season? We touched on them a bit earlier. Melbourne, I feel, will obviously get fitter, pull their fingers out, combination of everything. and Gross. Click and make a late finals push. Yep. And I also had Carlton as late improvement. Not necessarily in terms of wins and losses, but... You'll see their players progress and mature throughout the year, even though it probably won't necessarily reflect in wins. I they'll think, look a lot. They'll look. I think the opposite. You think they'll get worse? I think they need to bank the wins now while they're playing good football, which they are playing relatively good football. Yeah. And because Sam Walsh is not going to be getting 30 possessions a game all year or 25, he's going to get tired. So are the younger guys. In my opinion. I'm just talking yeah. out my ass. But my tip would actually be that they're going to not be playing as well at the end of the year as they are now. Yeah, the young, real young guys, I'd agree. But then the guys were like probably third, fourth year where they've had a few pre-seasons, been able to build up their fitness and stuff. Yeah, fair enough. Have that f- level of fitness for a full season and just, I feel like the Zach Fishers of the world is probably yeah. an example of that. Yeah, of which there are one. Well, like petrevsky Satan, <laughs> Yeah, that, that yeah. Ilka player. Yeah, yeah, yeah Kerno. Yeah. Um, 
I'm going to say maybe Adelaide to improve later in the year just because surely. Yeah. <laughs> I just think they're too good to be where they are on the line. Yeah, line. definitely. Um, yeah, they've been pretty average this year. And, you know, yeah, there's talent yeah. on the list. You know, we, can, we don't have to rattle them all off, but, um, yeah. Will oh, Nick yeah. Nat get to his best? Get back to his best. This is from Flag Eagles, Chris. I've uh, said probably not. Yeah, I he's guess... He's gone through that much at this point, and he's missed that much chance to practice and improve over the years. He probably just... I don't think he'll ever get to as good as he could have been, but... If he comes back and plays the same way as he did in the first half of last year, I'll take that and run. Because I think that, that was a good enough stand. That's what I mean. Even he's not his best, is still a quality yeah. player. Like, yeah. yeah. He's still the best ruckman you got, even at 75, 80% of what he is. Yeah. I think he's just... I don't think he's ever going to become the player we hoped he would. No. Nah. But if, yeah, like I said, if he becomes as good as he was pre-injury, then that's, that's still a very good player. Yeah. So. Um, Flag Eagles Chris has also asked another question, and he says, what are our thoughts on the Eagles' first and second year players? I'll, I reckon I'll, I'll give this a bit of superficial yeah, outside no. perspective, and you can bring it home with your in-depth love of the Eagles and knowledge <laughs> of their team that's now, a bit more extensive than mine. We'll keep it short and sweet, yeah. but yeah. Basically, I've got the four that I've seen play first for the Eagles. I've got Oscar Allen. He looks great. Like I'd love to have a play like that at the Dockers another like even though we've brought in guys like that they haven't sort of done it yet and as a youth he'd be a good guy to build as a key forward for the future good Kennedy replacement Brander seems good I haven't seen too much of him it's hard to peg a position for him as well at this stage so it's hard to get a read on him but he does look good from what I've seen Liam Ryan's looking good obviously he's part of the premiership winning team dynamic small forward can take a grab that sort of thing and Petricelli haven't seen too much of him but quick Petch equals quick is what yeah, my notes say. That is very true. That was on the clipboard of every recruiter in the 2017. <laughs> Get me a job. Yeah. Um, cool. No, well, pretty well summed up. I'll say Alan, I think, could potentially be like a real gun of the competition. Um, Pav, like you almost say. I'm not going to say he's as good as Pav, but in the sense that he can play so many different positions yeah. and... Um, Hogan Evans, a bit like that. He can... Yeah. Similar height too. He's only yeah. 192 centimetres. Um, yeah. I think he's he's probably one of our best. He's talents. probably grown since yeah. that measurement, surely. The footy clubs stop updating heights on their website because I, I reckon yeah. it's a competitive advantage thing. They yeah. they've still got they had McGovern as like one ninety one for the first five years of his career and then they yeah. changed it to one ninety five now. Yeah. Isn't Fife still listed as one ninety? One ninety or one ninety two, I yeah, think. Oh, okay. Okay. I don't know. But I think he's taller than what's listed. Oscar Allen as well, yeah. I think he's taller than 192, which is listed yeah. at. Uh, some some people say he's about 195. Um, yeah, right. my theory is that they, they stop updating that information. Um, Ryan, I was a little bit sceptical when he first got him. I thought he was a little one-dimensional, but he's just broken internal club records for pressure acts at the club, yeah. I think, as long as he's a pressure forward uh, first and foremost. Um, well, I, I just love as long as he's got the other stuff that he was known for when he got drafted, True. how he was the Coleman equivalent in the waffle, that sort of thing. If, if he's still got that, but can bring that pressure and yeah, yeah. stuff, that's what you need more so. Yeah, uh, you summed up with Petch pretty pretty well. Um, he's <laughs> already equals quick. He already surpassed my expectations of what I thought he was going to be. Yeah. Um, I'm always skeptical of ones who are just athletic, not necessarily football yeah. smart. Mm. But he, no, it's a credit to him. He's he's looked really good. Brand is gifted, needs a bit more time, but he could be, you know, a really good key forward. Ainsworth is a really interesting one for me. He seems to be really internally rated, but uh, butchers the ball really badly. Mm. Uh, I watched him play playing the waffle last week, and gee whiz, yeah, uh, it was a bit of a head scratcher. Um, Twenty nineteen cohort haven't debuted yet. Yeah. Um, the only one I'd heard of was Cameron. Jared Cameron, yeah. of his brother. They look solid. I like yeah. Luke Foley, but at the moment they're just they're going to be in the waffle for. Yeah. Year or two at least, so yeah. Any wor- worried about retaining necessarily? It's hard to say. Venables has just been dumped out of the best eleven, a uh, best twenty-two, um, and he's Victorian, so there's yeah. a chance there, but I not not immediately. Yeah. That fourth round pick will come in handy, <laughs> but you're getting compensation for, for a him. Premiership player. <laughs> <laughs> nah, he, he won't. He'll get more than that. Um, but I think he's contracted for a while, so no, nah, yeah. that's so good. You did the thing where you lock the kids in early. Mm, like you do, in your cage. <laughs> Are you still talking about football? Oh, okay. Um, this but literally, every time you say it while well, the kid's still like, oh my God, I'm playing AFL, this is awesome. Every team always yeah. talks him into signing that early yeah. extension. They do get a pay rise, though. Yeah. yeah. All right, the next question we got is uh, from Bruce, who asks, at full fitness, 
Who has the better defence out of Fremantle and West Coast? I reckon you'll like this question. Mm. I had to say the Eagles, unfortunately, but realistically. But with, a, with guys like Barras, McGovern, Shepard and Hearn as four of your back six, you could argue at least three of those four are elite and all four of them are certainly above average defenders. That mm. It's a hard back line to compete with. But that, saying that, that doesn't mean Freo's is shit. Yes, it does. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Freo's got probably one of the better back ones in the league, and I'd say they're younger as well, so I've got that potential to improve and overtake the Eagles, particularly because guys like her and Shepard are ageing, obviously. Yeah, I agree. Well, pretty much all of them other than Barras are probably ageing. How old's McGovern, actually? 26. Okay, he's not 20, too bad. Turning 27. Yeah. He's a year older than me. Yeah, he's not too bad then. Um, yeah, I mean, like, I think, I think West Coast probably have very close to the best back line in the league. I'd, I'd give you the best back line. I, th- I think it's the system as much as it is the star players. McGovern and Hearn... Um, in particular, probably absolutely elite. And then you've got Barras and Shepard, who are very, very good. Um, but then you have more role players like Jeddah, Duggan and Cole, who are good players, but nothing real yeah. special. But because of they all have like traits that makes yeah. them elite, like Jeddah can... Jeddah's kicking yeah. out of the back line, obviously. Yeah. Um, but comparatively, Fremantle... I mean, I think Richmond are up there as well. I don't know if, I don't know if Fremantle have a better back line than someone like Richmond, but I think they're getting up there pretty close. Pierce and Hamling are two very good key defenders, particularly Pierce. It's probably underrated. Pierce is a guy that will do a job on a guy without necessarily doing lots with the ball himself. Sort yeah, of thing, but that's probably the difference just, between yeah. him and like Rance and McGovern and yeah. Berlin. And those guys are more intercepty. Yeah, yeah, that's true. That's true. Um, Luke Ryan has starting to yeah. become probably an A grade defender, very close to it, yeah. if not already. Um, Stephen Hill has been injured for so long. But he's a very good defender. So if you're saying at full fitness, you have to include him. Same with Connor Blakely. He's been out of the team. I'd you don't like Blakely, do you? <laughs> <laughs> he's my favourite play player, mate. <laughs> but I was going to say, I can, I'd consider him a mid at this point now, but Neil's gone. That seems to be the plan with him. Yeah, yeah. Well, Chair we'll is the one they seem to be trying to stick down back at the moment. But oh, really? Yeah. I, haven't, I haven't actually noticed that. I, Again, yeah. that, um, I'd prefer him as a half forward because he... I think he's with that entry into the forward 50. True. His ball use is so good, though. That's yeah. why they want him in the back line, I think. Yeah. Um, Wilson, I feel like he could... We need better ball use in our forward half. We've got guys in our back half that can use it pretty well, like Wilson is Ryan. Yeah. Pretty good kick. Yeah. Wilson probably hasn't forward. become as quite as good as he was at GWS. Do you agree with that? Yeah, he hasn't quite been as prolific. But yeah. What do you think of Conker? Because he's been playing back line, right? Yeah. Well, he had a bad derby. Yeah, he did. He had a bad <laughs> derby. <laughs> But he's been fairly consistent, I think. He's been okay. Yeah. yeah. He's not going to be a star or nothing, but he'll be a fringe 22 guy that does his job and yeah. does it reasonably well. Yeah. Like, I guess to sum up the question, West Coast have the better back line. They've probably got close to the best defence in the league. It's probably I'd their strongest his, line. Maybe their forward line is actually strong. I'd They're very it even, actually. Fremantle, it's probably their strongest line as well. Definitely. It's one of the better back lines in the league. Um I'd yeah. call us quite, like on paper, we're definitely a top five back line for uh, yeah. on paper. It's, it's, yeah, it's hard to say that without actually yeah. going through it, but I yeah. wouldn't be surprised if that was the case. They do have a very underrated back line. Who's your favourite AFL commentator, Bruce asked? I've got <coughs> BT and Bruce McElhaney. Why do you like BT? Because he, he doesn't harp on, he just says what's going on, like, and he's happy and enthusiastic. Like Some of these guys that just try and waffle on with their own analysis showing off how smart they are instead of calling what's going on at times. It's True, BT definitely doesn't pretend to be smart. Exactly, and Bruce <laughs> just like, just loves it. And Bruce, so, yeah. 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 Yeah, he's much more a... Um, him and Hudson are much more like your yeah, atmospheric kind of, yeah. uh, if that's the right word, um, big, big moment callers. Yeah. But no, they're not ex-players. Actually, they were. I think um, McAvaney played was actually a decent footballer in South Australian... Could like state level, I think he was actually all right, but um, but the point being, they're not like yeah. ex players, so they're not um, analytical yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah. So I get your point. I actually like Eddie as a caller. Yeah, I like Eddie. The problem Eddie's I have with him enemy. is not even the Collingwood thing. It's just he picks a side every time, and a lot of commentators are guilty of that. At yeah. the start of the game, he'll decide which team he's going for, and you won't hear a thing about the other team for the rest of the game. He's yeah. and the West Coast Eagles have been on the wrong side of that. That's why I'm an Eagles fan, obviously, so yeah. I notice it. And I remember a particularly bad game against Carlton. And I remember once Dermot said something positive about the Eagles in that game. This is one-off experience. But, um, and Eddie went, oh, you've turned. <laughs> so I was like, that just shows his mindset. But um, I think he's a good commentator. And I think Hudson yeah. as well yeah, for Hutto the big moment. Good. Yeah, I like Hutto. Um, yeah, he's commented a few I, big Eagles moments. So. 
Brayshaw, I don't mind either. Jack yeah, he, he pissed me off in the last final series, so. But no, he's, <laughs> he's all right. Yeah. Um, Waitley is a pretty good. I don't particularly find him super likable. I think he's a little bit. Does he righteous call games or is that? He does on um, SEN okay, or yeah. ABC. It's, or I think Triple it's SEN. Or something like that. Yeah, I think it's SEN. Yeah. Um, I've heard the his commentary of the grand final, and he yeah. probably did the best commentary out of anyone. Yeah. They got a brand new stadium, a big one. No. <laughs> <laughs> that, that wasn't great in hindsight. That was Bruce. Um, anyway, Aegon Targaryen asks, what are your memories of the Eagles grand finals wins and losses? We'll keep this short and sweet. I attended both 06 and 2000, uh, 2018. Um, both times I was there with my dad. 06? I was there in 06. So you're 06, 15 and 08? Yeah, I've been to three grand finals. Five, yeah, five. I'm very, very lucky. Um, obviously, we won in 16 and 18. Uh, sorry, 20, 2006 and 18, and they were probably the two best days of my life. 2018 probably meant a little bit more for me because, you know, like when you're an adult and you've been waiting yeah. 12 years for it, whereas when I was a kid, it was kind of handed to me. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I was there in 2015, um, hung over as whole hell. I don't know why I thought it was a good idea to have a big night before the grand final, and it just ended up being the worst day ever. Yeah, that, you told me some stories about that night. It sounded like you had fun. <sighs> no. Um, do you have any particular interesting experience about grand finals that the Eagles have been in? Well, the one that is lost, I actually hosted a bit of a gather here with a few people. Was, a celebration party? My, well, funny how it's because we were just getting pissed. I have mate, he's a big Eagles fan. Like, after the loss, like, it was a reasonably big loss. He was pretty blue at this stage. He had a few beverages. He ends up, because the beach is about 600 metres down that way, he ends up walking down the steep hill to the beach and swan diving off the jetty. <laughs> Just because he was that devastated about the Eagles losing, so that was pretty funny. I wasn't as devastated because I think um, I think we knew early in the second quarter that the game was over. So I had time. By the time the final ceremony went, and my heart didn't break. Yeah. It was already just devastated. Um, yeah, he just started pounding the bevies at that stage. Yeah. Like, yeah. There was a moment in the 2018 grand final where Jack Crisp took a mark while Collingwood was still in front and I yeah. almost burst into tears because I thought we'd lost. And that was the first time I'd really... Um, that was the first time I'd almost cried from heartbreak at the footy. Yeah. That was the first time. So um, and we ended up winning, so that was all right. Yeah, that work didn't work out for me because at that sort of stage where it looked like where Collingwood kicked that first couple of games, I just went, yeah, Eagles are probably done. I'll cash out my... Because I had a bet on both sides. So I cashed out the Eagles bet thinking I'd make a bit of extra money with that money plus my Collingwood wins. So then I cashed out the Eagles for not optimal and then yeah. Collingwood ended up losing. I was pissed. <laughs> um, but it was too good of a game for me to stay mad because as a neutral person, it was a good game to watch. Yeah, fair play, fair play. Um, which grand final is your favourite, both including and excluding your club? Favourite? Yeah, so what's the best grand final you've ever seen as someone who hasn't Ooh. won a premiership? Sorry. I enjoyed the doggies winning one, actually. I'm not going to lie. That was a nice little moment. Yeah. yeah. That was my, that's my favourite, not the Eagles. the first one after the Hawks had had their run, so it was good Very to see true. some other than the Hawks win, which added something to it as well. Very true. I agree. That was my nomination for my favourite grand final, other than um, the Eagles... The other one was Sydney in 2012 was a good one. I also enjoyed 2005, Leo Barry, you are a star, <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I thought that was a shocking game, though. Yeah, but that, mo- that moment just... Yeah, okay. That moment will be with you yeah. the rest of my life. This is going to sound biased, but I thought 05 was a terrible game, and 06 was a brilliant game. <laughs> but I just honestly think it was. It was about 10 more goals in the, in yeah. the 06 one. Um, and I guess the Leo Barry one, it sounds ridiculous, but because we'd struggled to score all day, I never thought we were a chance of scoring from that inside 50. Uh, so I think that mark is a little bit... Over. No, it was a brilliant mark. It was a brilliant one of those mark. ones. I was probably a bit young to fully remember the sort of game. I just remember the moments. And, yeah, 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 true, true. But I remember thinking, oh, so he took a defensive mark, we weren't going to score a goal anyway. But, um, anyway, what's the worst grand final you've ever watched? This is another one from Aegon to Agarian. Dockers, Hawks. That, that, <laughs> that, that got me right in the feels. Yeah, okay, fair enough. Um, I, I was thinking, we're finally going to break through. We've been sitting here for 20 years. Yeah, having the crap. You did have a red hot streak, I think, in the third quarter. I was yeah. watching it with Darcy. I remember thinking you were going to win, but yeah, because um, we did half mount that sort of thing. Yeah, yeah, that child. Yeah. Um, <laughs> what? Oh, okay. So, in terms of the worst grand final I've ever watched, I hated 2017, where Richmond belted Adelaide. Yeah, it was partly a good shit game to watch. Partly, I was going for Adelaide. And secondly, I got really pissed thinking it was going to be a great grand final day. And then I realised at half time, or no, in the third quarter, Richmond were going to smash him and I was just getting 
sad and angry and drunk. And I was like, <laughs> this is the worst grand final day ever. Um, so I, in the future, I might not have a big grand final day. I might drink after the game's finished because, yeah, I just got really angry over the game. Hard, um, final question. Well, second last one because I want to ask you one after this. Biggest pet peeve of the opposite person, Bruce asks. So what's your biggest pet peeve? Also, I struggle to think of one, but oh. something that came up the other day is your lack of proofreading when I send stuff in. <laughs> Elaborate. I hope you got rid of that in the team of the week. Elaborate. Yeah, so you wrote... In well, I'd left him a note about... Because I wasn't sure about a position of one of the guys I played. Because I knew he'd had a good game, but I wasn't quite sure if he'd classify him purely as defender for the purposes of that game. So I sort of left him going, what do you guys think? No one replied. They just left copy and pasted my bit I didn't even see the message I I probably could have made it stand out a bit more to be fair to you but (laughs) I kind of just did stick brackets at the end and hope you'd read it see I still think that's your fault (laughs) (laughs) no I'm just kidding that's my other pet peeve it's always mine (laughs) I got a pet peeve but it's kind of ironic because I just did it to you but all the pedo jokes you make about me I've been it's better since 2014. No, you have not. Well, maybe a little bit, yeah. But oh, then so I you just... don't remember how bad I was? Yeah, yeah, that's true. No, it, just that's kidding. That's pretty much how we founded our whole relationship. <laughs> no, other than that, we don't really have too many pet peeves. Yeah. <laughs> We're all the best of friends. Awesome. Um, last question of True Pod- Podcast 30, and this is just me asking you. Yep. Star Wars trailer. Thoughts, comments, impressions? It seems like they've sort of... I've watched, I saw a meme that sums this up quite well, actually, it was like a Rian Johnson, JJ meme, it was like, episode 7, JJ going, yeah, I'm going to do all this nostalgia stuff, <laughs> and then episode 8, Rian's just like, yeah, I'm going to shit on all this and change it and make all the new characters important stuff, and now 9 again, it's like, Avery's like, yeah, I'm going to bring back Palpatine. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah. More nostalgia. I wonder how much of that is, is like, is true, is a... Uh, is there a serious like divergence in what the two directors wanted, or are they actually a little bit more in on it together than people are saying? What do you, I don't know. It's a tough one to say. I've, Apparently, Palpatine was always meant to come back. Because I know with the, like the legends, which is the stuff that's no longer canon, but was yeah. sort of what people yeah what happened before Palpatine had multiple. He cloned himself. Yeah, yeah. I think, I think that, that sounds like that, yeah. shit. To be honest, yeah. so I'm, I'm hoping it's not that. <laughs> but I, what I'll say is <clears throat> about the trailer is that the reveal was amazing. Whatever you think about Palpatine coming back, in my opinion, that, that reveal, that vi- the, it really made the... Tra- the trailer was always going to be viral, but like I spent like half an hour watching just reactions to the trailer and everyone's face going... <gasps> and I feel like it, with that, it, often by itself... It's an absolute slam dunk because it just the shock factor of that was almost like uh, not quite Luke. I'm the title almost. What's wrong with the title? I'm not that I, big. I don't think big. you can judge the title until you've seen the movie though, because mm. we don't know what it means. Uh, still, sounds a bit. The rise of Skywalker. Uh-huh. Yeah, is it about Ray being a Skywalker? Personally, I hope not. I feel like if she's a Skywalker, we should have had hints about that already, yeah. or or even been told already. Um, and I feel like Han probably would have. Oh no, hang on. Skywalker. If she's Luke's, yeah, nah, there's no way, surely. Yeah, I can't. Surely they would have. I've heard the Kenobi theory. Yeah, I've heard the Palpatine theory. Yeah, I've heard the Palpatine theory. There's, like, I guess, there's endless theories. Um, but I've heard the Watto theory. Have you heard the Watto theory? <laughs> that is not a real theory. Yeah, I made that up. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> that's a good one. <laughs> Credits will do. <laughs> no, they won't. <laughs> um, yeah. No, I, th- I thought. I thought the trailer was just an awesome reveal. Like, I've rewatched it so many times. Have you seen the part um, when they do the Star Wars celebration, Ian McDermott actually comes onto the stage when they first premiered the trailer? No. Nah. Because the, the laugh happened and everyone's like, what the hell? And then Ian McDermott yeah. comes on stage and he goes, roll it again. And everyone <laughs> goes nuts. It's actually, I don't know. I That'd thought be, it was sick. Yeah, that would be sick. Like yeah. That. Um, so, yeah. I'm yeah. looking forward to Star Wars. Yeah. Bloody earth. Cool. Endgame, looking forward to that? Or you're not as... What is that? Is that Marvel? The, yeah, the last... Cannot stand Marvel. Yeah, I was going to say, that's like the grand finale <laughs> of that whole Avengers, yeah. Iron Man, 10 years nah. in the making thing. Avengers, Iron Man, Thor, <laughs> not into it at all. Sorry, I'm probably insulting a lot of people who like it. You just like the Ant-Man theory, don't you? You're into that sort of... The theory? Yeah, the theory of how Ant-Man's going to save the day, because <laughs> there's an unbeatable villain. Oh, jeez. Basically, they think Ant Man's going to shrink himself, crawl up the enemy's ass, and re enlarge himself to beat him. That's basically the theory. <laughs> re enlarge himself. Yeah. Far out. That's basically the theory on how they're going to beat Thanos. 
<laughs> Fainus. <laughs> Fainus. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much the fear he's called Fainus. <laughs> All right, guys. I think that will do. I'm going to go home and pack after I edit this. So thank you for joining us for True Funny Podcast 30. And we'll see you next time. Scoot. Adios. <laughs>